What's up? Ghost Fictions is here, and we're back again. This is the part 1 of a story where Issei was a user of Infinity Curse technique. Issei Haidu, or just Issei was an exorcist that had no memory of his past. He was one of the strongest exorcists of all time, due to possessing many special abilities, however a recent encounter with two Nekishas changed his thoughts and ideologies, he was starting to see the lies of the church and spared them causing him to be excommunicated. However he did not go down without a fight, he surpassed all expectations and managed to escape, but not before leaving a mark on the church, causing him to be considered one of the most dangerous excommunicated stray exorcists in existence. But as fate would have it, things will get even more complicated for our amnesiac protagonist. But before we start, please consider subscribe to the channel and give this video a like. Don't forget to check the description for more information. Now, let's get into part 1. Quote from Satoru Goho. Throughout heaven and earth, I alone am the honored one. The man can be seen in chains, and being wrapped around with a cloth of white nylon material that is being dragged around, he had a white band tied to his eyes, he was being pushed by two men in white robes, they both had their weapons ready in case the criminal would escape. The criminal was stated to be a man with white hair, underneath his blindfold he had blue eyes, that made him see a lot of things. This was a say, and he was being executed for a crime that will be revealed soon enough to everyone present. We are here. Traitor. Issei only stayed silent, the reason is that he has had enough of the church's blatant hypocrisy. He was never a fan of the church and the seraphs, and often got annoyed by following their customs. He was sent on several exorcist missions before. Yes, Issei was once an exorcist, the priest and one of the strongest, if not the strongest exorcist, nicknamed, the Honored One. But, a certain incident changed everything. It was when he confronted the Nekishu sisters. Under normal circumstance, he would kill the two girls or Nekishas, but he could see that not only did they not intend to fight like most strays, they wanted to just live their lives as normal, them being attractive was a bonus too, as a result, he chose to spare the two much to their gratitude. They promised they would meet again, but unfortunately, the church did not approve of what Issei had done, hence they branded him a heretic and demanded his excommunication and eventually execution, since he was too dangerous to be kept alive. The restraints on his legs were dropped, and a push was shoved to the criminal and heretic of the church. That inside, you heretic. Issei walked inside, unbeknownst to the two, he had already planned an escape route, but not before teaching those old hags a lesson or two. He really hated the church elders and the pope, and wanted to make an example out of some of them. Issei could see himself, as the church elders all started down on him. Despite the blindfold being present, it had no effect whatsoever. He could still see the people around him, he knew that these morons want him executed. Issei then spoke. So, which one of you morons is going to get this sham of a trial over with? Can we just get to the sentencing? I honestly am not interested. Issei spoke with a mocking tone, as many of the priests and bishops were angered by this, however the most angriest was the Pope himself, Father Robertio Aguno Valentina. He is the Pope of the Supreme Church of Vatican. He is seen garbed in a green and blue robe befitting his status as a clergyman. He wears a dark cowl over his shoulders, ending in a white hood that drapes over his head. His visage is lined with age, with sharp eyebrows and dark eyes, the lower half of his face partially covered by full facial hair, consisting of a long grey beard and thick moustache. You damned heretic. First you defy the church, then you show blatant disrespect, I will essay cuts him off with a mocking tone, yeah, yeah, keep telling yourself that old hag, I could care less on what you think. After all, the reason we are here is because you believe me too dangerous to be alive, right? Issei was grinning making the church elders or bishops and the pope really angry. You. Another of the elders growled as the Pope shouted, silence. The room fell silent, as the Pope declared, the honored one. Issei, do you plead guilty for the escape of the Nekishu sisters, or not? Issei gave a sigh and responded, you know the answer, old man, why don't you just end it and give the sentence already? Show some respect, you damned heretic. Issei rolled his eyes at the exorcist that has spoken to him, as he responded, why? It is not like old man over their mind, doesn't he? Issei pointed to the Pope, who was getting even more angrier as the Pope angrily declared, do you plead guilty, or not? Issei looked at the Pope and looked around. He noticed that none of the more threatening exorcists are present like Dulio Jesualdo and Griselda Corda to name a few. Neither is Siegfried or Jean present as well. He wondered where those two were, but he was glad that two of his closest friends were absent, since they wouldn't bear and would protest, but it was not like they are going to listen. Yeah, yeah, I do. Can you get the sentencing over with? Issei was getting bored, he knew that many of the ones present here won't even pose a challenge, those that did were already present with some other missions, meaning this was a perfect opportunity to get rid of the shackles that were present in Issei's heart. After all since today, he would no longer be bound by the church's rules. He would be leaving the church for good and start a new life. 
He only waited for the statement to respond, as someone else was speaking to him. Partner, when will we escape? The one who spoke was the Welsh dragon Drake. Issei was able to keep his sacred gear a secret from most of the church, since if they knew he would be even in bigger trouble. The only ones that know this are a select few, and a certain someone he didn't want to know, but unfortunately he came to know. Soon enough, Drag. Just be patient, you are going to enjoy this. Drag huffed in response, hoping to make things interesting for him. He looked at the Pope who was discussing with the bishops on his sentence. Some were mocking Issei from behind his back, which was something he could hear. Seems like this damned heretic is going to get what he deserves. One spoke mockingly as another responded. Yep, he should have killed those two, now his whole life is ruined. Another responded, with Issei only grinning as soon enough, things are going to get worse for them. He could use balance breaker or full powered balance breaker, but he decided to not use, only using it when he would fight against the Saras or Archangels, in case they do end up sending them. A judgment against the heretic, known as Issei has been made, due to the extensive research and investigation, as well as several witnessed reports, I hereby declare Issei, the honored one to be. The Pope spoke with a pause, as he continued. Guilty. The crowd roared in applause, as Issei internally rolled his eyes in annoyance, he knew this was nothing but a sham, the outcome would have been the same regardless, as the Pope spoke. As for your sentence you will be excommunicated and executed. The crowd cheered even more, believing Issei deserved it, Issei was only getting more irritated by the cheers, he knew the ones that surround him were either jealous or outright hate him for his attitude, the Pope then asked. Any last words? Issei only laughed once as he spoke, yep. I am finally free. Issei declared with a grin, as soon enough, the restraint started to burn down without any mercy. He was burning through the blindfold and any of the nylon clothing that was hurting him. The chains were melting off of him, as the exorcists were horrified, Issei shouldn't be able to break through, as the Pope shouted. This is impossible. The Pope shouted as the exorcists unleashed holy magic on Issei, who took the hit without much effort, the resulting magic attack resulted in an explosion, causing a dust storm, once the dust settled. The magic was nothing but immobilized as Issei held the magic in his place. He had his one finger out. Now, now, that is not very nice. Issei spoke with a grin, he now wore a white shirt, black coat, black sunglasses and black pants. He wore a black belt on his pants. Is that all you have got? Issei spoke with a mocking tone, as the exorcists looked with horror, as he looked at the attacks, and spoke, low class at worst, and mid class at best. If you presume me weak. Issei looked at the attacks, and spoke with a grin. Then you are dead wrong. Well have them back. Issei reflected the attacks back with him generating a red sphere in his hand, he commands the sphere into the attacks, which sends the attack back at the senders, due to the repulsive force, as massive numbers of explosion took place. Only some of the attacks hit him, but it barely did anything. Well, bishops, pope. What will you do now? The bishops and pope gritted their teeth in anger, the move Issei used was infinity followed up by dot. The move infinity is a variant of limitless, Issei's own special magic. Limitless grants its users nigh absolute control over space through cursed energy manipulation at an atomic level, resulting in multiple subsequent results and techniques within the overall ability. With the manipulation of space as just the base level of the technique. Infinity is a neutral variation or base state of limitless, and is essentially the power to stop. The limitless technique operates the same way convergent and divergent sequences do in mathematics. The infinity is the convergence of an immeasurable series, anything that approaches the infinity slows down and never reaches the user. This is because the technique takes the finite amount of space between the two subjects and divides it an infinite amount of times. The limitless brings this concept into reality, so anything that attempts to penetrate this infinitely divided space will slow down to the point of appearing to stop completely. He can also send the attacks back, which was another technique known as red repulsion. Red Repulsion is a magic technique of Limitless similar to Infinity, but it is where Issei uses more magic, and in a reversal sort of manner, instead of using it in a normal manner, he instead uses this technique to create a repelling force that manifests as a small red orb that can unleash immense explosive force in an instant. He basically puts in the divergence of Infinity to reality, thus causing a massive repelling force. The Pope was ready to attack, but Issei was not having any of it, he soon created a blue orb, and before anyone could react, he sent it towards the Pope and the other bishops, causing a magnetic pull towards them, the resulting force killed some of the bishops, those that survived were screaming in pain. They tried to use magic to quell the force, but were unable to do so. This was blue absorption, the reverse of red reversal. It's over. Issei spoke as the space around them crushed and blood and guts were flying across in every single location. The only one alive was the Pope, as he walked towards the man. The rest all were killed in a brutal manner, as Issei spoke coldly to the Pope, who was looking at him with anger and fear in his eyes. 
He holds the poke by his chin, who was starting to be even more fearful. I will be taking my leave. Don't bother trying to send those weak small fries towards me, if you value their lives. Issei kicked the Pope with such force sending him flying. He had a look of horror before he was knocked out cold. Whether he was alive or dead needed to be found out. See ya. Issei spoke as he left, while he did so, he was suddenly ambushed by a horde of exorcists, they were a squad of 30 exorcists led by their leader, a man named Takumi. Issei, I would advise you to surrender and accept death, while well, Issei cuts the man off with a yawn and speaks, cut the chit chat, I am not interested. I will only tell you once Takumi, take your squad and walk out of here, I won't come after you. Issei speaks coldly causing the man to grit his teeth, as he unleashed his light sword and charged at him, the rest followed soon after as Issei sighed and spoke. Well, don't say I didn't warn you. Issei generated a red orb in his arms, once again using red reversal as he sent the orb. The immense repulsive force created such a field that it sent not only the exorcists flying, but the impact gave several of them concussions on the head, enough to kill them. But the ones that were the most affected were the closest ones as their whole skin was ripped from their body, including some of their vital organs, as they soon collapsed dead on the ground. He gave one look at Takumi and shook his head, before heading outside the building. He was wondering if there was anyone that could stop him. He looked around the Vatican building to see if he could find anything useful as a souvenir. He looked to see several fragments of the infamous blade Excalibur, he took six of the seven swords, with the seventh one being in the Pendragon house. He remembered two of the fragments were supposed to be given to an upcoming exorcist, but he chose to keep it with him. Well, I would be taking this as a souvenir. Issei kept the Excaliburs in a pocket dimension which he created. He soon walked out with his hands in the pocket, as soon he would be heading towards the outside. He soon sensed an immense magical strength, he sighed as he knew that the Seraphs and the other angels were here. Issei. I would advise you to surrender yourself right now. Issei recognized her voice, and gave a sad sigh. He knew who sent her to face off against him knowing she is a weakness of his. This was Gabriel, one of the four great seraphs, he knew he had to confront her, even if he did not like it. He soon went outside to see Gabriel with an army of angels. Gabriel was described to be a beautiful woman with voluptuous figure. She had blonde curly hair and green eyes. She wore standard armor, which comprised of armor, breastplate, pauldrons, breastplate, placard, tassets, pollens, greaves and sabatons. Her armor was of the heavens, and she had her twelve wings out in the open. Issei could see her pained expression, as he noted she was almost on the verge of crying. He clenched his fists in anger knowing who exactly sent her after him, knowing he would be weak against her. It was the leader of the heaven, Michael himself. Issei always hated the man, he never knew why, and he when he tried to search why, his head would pain for an unknown reason. He shook his thoughts and sighed, as Gabriel spoke. Don't make me do this, Issei. Surrender yourself, and turn yourself in. Please. Gabriel spoke the last part with a low tone, she did not want to hurt him, let alone kill him. Issei only looked at her for a moment, knowing she hated being here and spoke. You know very well, I can't do that, right? Issei soon brought out the boosted gear making Gabriel gulp, he really was not going to go down without a fight. Gabriel was one of the select few that knew Issei had the boosted gear, and she also knew what he was capable of. She did not want to fight him, whether it be his strength or her fighting against someone she cared for. After all Gabriel loved him, she feared losing him one day, due to his dislike of the normal church traditions. Issei never was shackled to the church, causing several to either dislike or hate him for his nature. Even the angels were no exception, but kept it in, due to them not desiring to fall and become fallen angels. I am leaving. Issei spoke as Gabriel felt a pang in her heart, as he continued, tell your angels to leave, unless they don't want to die for no purpose. Many angels have died in the Great War, and I have no reason to kill any more than I already have today, but I won't hesitate. Gabriel knew what this meant, this meant that every single member that tried to stop him have died trying. She knew that she would not only make things worse by letting her army fight against Issei, she never wanted to fight him at all, but also they would end up dying a horrible death by his hands. She knew that the angels were at an all-time low due to the biblical god's death, and any more of them would cause even more problems, something she did not want to risk. Issei could sense her body shaking, she did not want to fight at all, she hated being here to begin with. However, Gabriel took a deep breath, as Issei got ready, but what Gabriel spoke, surprised the Red Dragon Emperor, everyone, head back to heaven, we will not be stopping Issei in any way. Lady Gabriel, but he is a criminal, he needs to be stopped. Gabriel turned to the angel with a serious gaze and spoke, I am aware, but he will not hesitate to kill you, your lives are more valuable for the time being. But. The soldier wanted to retort, but Gabriel spoke, I will handle this, all of you leave, that is a direct order from me. What about Lord Michael? Another had spoken, Gabriel gave a sigh, it was him that sent her to deal with Issei as she spoke, I will handle him, for now. 
leave. As you wish Lady Gabriel. The angels left, but not without glaring at Issei, once they were gone Gabriel had tears in her eyes, as she exclaimed, why Issei? Why did you chose to turn on us? I never did. All I did was spare the two Nekishas. They were innocent. Gabriel retorted in response, but the devils declared them to be S-rank strays, if they are out in the open, they will cause even more problems. No Gabriel, those two, they are innocent, I usually don't spare strays, but they, they were innocent. Yes they killed their master. But in reality, there is something more Gabriel. Issei spoke as he continued. Those two, they only wanted to live a normal life, they did not attack me upon encounter, as usually many either attack or lure you into a false sense of security, but they did neither. They used their tricks to escape, when I had one cornered and almost killed, the other tried to protect her, even willing to sacrifice herself. They begged me to spare them, and I knew, something was off. I spared them knowing that there was something more. The devils are hiding something, that is all I know, and unlike most strays, they are one of the few that are known to be intelligent. Issei's words made Gabriel realize that Issei spared them for a reason, she only knew that Issei had spared those two, and was declared a traitor. But why did you kill the ones inside? Issei sighed as he spoke, they didn't gave me much of a choice, they wanted me dead because of their natural hatred of me, they were always jealous of what I am capable of. Plus I gave them a chance to walk away while they can, but they chose this. Gabriel looked at him for a moment, as she spoke. I see. Gabriel knew Issei had no choice, when he killed them. Issei then spoke seeing her expression changing, she was starting to see that Issei did not change much, or changed at all, as he soon asked. Gabriel, do you still trust me? Gabriel looked at him for a moment wide-eyed, as she spoke after a short while, I do. Even after you're disobeying the church's orders, I still wanted to know why you did what you did. But I guess. You still are the same. Issei sighed before giving a smile, at least there was someone that still had faith in him and cared for him. Even then, are you sure you should spare those two? Issei nodded as he spoke, I have no regret sparing the sisters, they are only trying to survive in this world. Until I find out why they killed their master, I am going to make sure they are fine. I see. Gabriel responded, this was still the same Issei that she fell for, but at the same time, she did not understand why Michael feared and hated him, as she asked, but brother Michael, he hates you. He is the one that declared you traitor, and I did not want to believe it. That is why I wanted to talk. And now I know that he is in the wrong. Truth be told, even I don't understand why he hates and fears me when I was serving him without a problem, even when I hated his guts. Gabriel looked at what Issei said, as she shook her head and spoke. I don't understand why the both of you hate each other. Issei spoke, as he pulled the seraph towards her making her startled as he spoke, it's alright Gabriel, plus, with me being declared as an excommunicated, the church will see me as a threat, that is why, I will be going to a location where the church won't attack me. Gabriel became wide-eyed as she asked, you are leaving. Issei nodded as she spoke, I see. Well I guess, it was inevitable knowing you would go. Gabriel spoke as tears fell from her eyes, as Issei felt sad, but knew he had to do this, staying near Gabriel would only make him and potentially Gabriel unsafe. He soon pulled her even closer and kissed her on the forehead, making her have a red tint. I ice. Issei spoke with a smile as he spoke, see you, Gabriel, take care. Gabriel looked at Issei as he wiped her tears and spoke, we will meet again, soon. Yeah. Gabriel muttered with a smile. She knew he cared for her, and she knew he would be fine. Issei soon got up as he teleported out of there using Limitless, as Gabriel could only raise her hands, she could only look in sadness, knowing the one person she cared for is gone. She soon gave a smile, hoping they would meet again in the future. Take care eyes. Gabriel spoke as she teleported away, she had to tell Michael on what happened. Scene change. 6th heaven, 11 pm. No a man yelled hearing the report from Gabriel, she tried explaining him about Issei's actions, but he was not having any of it. This was Seraph Michael he had the appearance of a handsome looking man with long blonde hair and green eyes. Like Gabriel, he has 12 wings growing from his back, and unlike other angels whose wings are white, his wings are colored gold, further symbolizing his position as the leader, the wings were kept hidden. He wears a red robe with a gold cross on the front of his white alb. He has golden shoulder plates with a white sash and a golden halo set above his head. Brother listen, Issei did not want to attack them, and spoke Michael gave a glare which made her flinch for a moment, before taking a deep breath to calm himself down, he then spoke. Sorry about the outburst, but. You disobeyed a direct order, he needed to be restrained or killed, do you know how dangerous he is? Gabriel shook her head and spoke, I know, but I believe that he would not do anything dangerous, he never harmed me or any of my angels, and that is something I can confirm, you can even confirm with my fellow brothers and sisters. Michael wanted to retort but he couldn't, not without revealing things that shouldn't have happened. Gabriel then spoke. 
I understand that you wish for him to be punished for killing the church bishops and those exorcists, but Issei gave them a chance to walk away, if anything he killed them in self-defense. Michael looked at her for a moment and spoke. How can you be sure he isn't lying? Gabriel looked at him for a moment and spoke, I explained earlier that he could leave me and my angels harmed or killed, but he chose not to do so. He did not even try to lay a finger on me, at least not in the way of injuring or harming me. I believe in him, and always have. Brother. Michael looked at her for a moment and spoke, very well, you may leave. Gabriel bowed and soon walked outside, as Michael in his anger clenched his fists, he wanted to say it dealt with due to him being a threat. He never thought he would become this strong, let alone gain access to the boosted gear, let alone reach a level that could even defeat someone like him at such a young age. That bastard. I should have dealt with him before. He is a threat that needs to be dealt with. Michael spoke as he remembered something, with him continuing. He shouldn't remember that. Otherwise, everything I have worked for. Will all be destroyed. Michael spoke with fear, he was terrified of the consequences of an incident that happened years ago. He vowed to deal with Issei, or Issei Haidu, once and for all. Four years later. Guo, 7.30 am. A man was seen waking up from his bed, he yawned as he looked at the time, as he spoke with a hushed tone, well, it is about time. The man was none other than Issei, or as he goes by the full name Issei Goho, from a show he watched a while back. He needed a full name when he would remain in hiding, so why not go with this nickname? He decided to get dressed for his first day at his new school, Kuo Academy. I wonder what Gabriel is doing been a while since I have seen her. Issei yawned as he soon got up. He first cleaned his hair and got dressed. Suddenly, someone came barging in as she dashed towards Issei and wrapped her arms around him. Morning, Ice Chan. The one who spoke was described to be a girl with sky blue eyes and blonde hair tied together in a French braid. She wore a girl's gakuren, this was Jean Dark, the woman who possessed the spirit of Joan of Arc. Morning Jean. Issei looked at one of his very closest friends, both her and Siegfried are his closest to him. She looked at him with a smile, as Issei knew that these two left the church just a while after he had abandoned it. Let's head down, Siegfried and Karoka are waiting for us. Jean looked at him and nodded, as she spoke, yes, Ice Chan. Issei sat down, alongside two other people, the first being Siegfried, who was described to be a silver-haired boy with red eyes. He wore white shirt and blue jeans. He was another of Issei's closest friends in the church, alongside Jean. Siegfried, unlike Jean, who possessed the soul of Joan of Arc, he was an actual descendant of Siegfried, unlike many who were his clones that were recreated from the original, he was the actual descendant of the legendary hero himself. Both had one thing in common however, when they were detected to possess traits of legendary heroes, the Pope had them recruited, and they were forced to do something they never intended to do. They were made to live the lives of exorcists, even when they didn't want to. The only reason keeping those two here was because of Issei, the trio became good friends due to how similar they were. Additionally Jean did hold anger towards the church for executing her all those years ago. And when Issei left, the two joined him, and they have lived a normal life ever since, hunting and dealing with stray devils to become stronger. The final person that was present in the house was Kuroka, the S-rank stray devil herself, she was a beautiful young woman with a voluptuous figure, long black hair with split bangs, and hazel gold eyes with cat-like pupils. She had a pair of two tails and two ears as well. Her attire consists of a black kimono, a yellow obi, a set of golden beads, and an ornately detailed headband. The kimono features a red interior and it is open at her shoulders, giving view to her large breasts. So I believe you all will be going to Kuo Academy, Naya Issei nodded as he spoke, yes, we will all be going to school, but I am afraid you can't come with us. But why? I also want to join you three as well. Naya Kuroka exclaimed with a pout as Issei spoke with a sigh, it is because the two of the academy students are high-class devils, that being Sona Citri and Ria's Gremory, the former goes by the alias Sona Shatori. Not to mention, their peerages are also attending the school, most of them will kill you on sight, due to how dangerous the devils claim you to be, you remember being hunted down, don't you? Siegfried spoke, as Kuroka looked at him and reluctantly nodded. She agreed with the legendary hero's descendant. She could only look down, all she wanted to do is meet her sister who was attending the school as she wanted to check on her. Either way, we are here safe for now. The church won't be bothering us due to the incident that happened years ago. We should be alright, as long as the supernatural doesn't bother us. Issei spoke as Jean spoke with agreement. You are right, Ice Chan, we are safe, but sooner or later, things will come such that we will have to fight for our lives. The church won't spare us, and we can't trust the fallen or the devils completely as of yet. Issei nodded in agreement as he spoke, I do trust a select few, since they are on our side, but I agree, Kuroka's existence must not be known to anyone in this world. 
Hmm, that is true, you do have faith in the Kuo devils, since they have Shirin. But Siegfried responded, as Issei cuts him off and speaks, no Siegfried, Rias wouldn't even dare harm Shirin, if she does. I will handle the situation and make sure Shirin is safe. Siegfried nodded as Kuroka could only watch the situation and worry. She trusted Issei a lot, ever since he saved her and her sister years ago. He even willingly stopped being an exorcist due to this treatment, and ever since that day. She along with Siegfried and Jean, have been living in one house ever since. The house was not too big, but it was not too small, it was more than enough for four people. This was due to the more more accurately Issei salvaging any gems or jewels he could find for them to survive. Additionally, he had raided several abandoned churches and was lucky to find treasure troves of money and jewels, he understood that the churches were gathering money for their motives, whether it be good like feeding children and helping the needy or for other purposes. Plus, he had six of the seven Excalibur fragments, however he soon gained the final Excalibur fragment, after defeating the current wielder Arthur Pendragon, he eventually had to abandon his Excalibur, after the fragment chose Issei, as its new wielder with them assuring that he can use it without a problem. After that, here he forged and gained Excalibur, the sort of promised victory. Well, we should probably head to school, if we remain here, we will get too late. The others nodded as they finished their food and got ready to head towards the school. Kuroka wanted to speak to him, as she wanted complete assurance that her sister will be safe. Time passes and the group is ready to leave, as he was wearing his shoes. Someone called out to him, Ice. Issei turned around to see Kuroka with a worried expression, as he asked, is something the matter? When will I see Shirin Ice? Issei looked at her for a moment and spoke, soon enough. I am worried Ice, had you not convinced me four years back, I would have never parted ways with Shirin. Ice, I fear they may harm Shirin, and Kuroka is cut off when Issei approaches her and pulls her in a hug. She was startled by this, and felt warm as Issei spoke. I can assure you, anyone that even lays a single finger on Shirin will be dead before they stand. You know how protective I can get on those I care about, right Kuroka? Kuroka could only look and sniffle. She gave a nod in response, as Issei added, plus I go to school on a daily basis, and I keep tabs on her. Rias also wouldn't harm her, and Serzichas gave his word to me, she will be protected at all costs. Not to mention, you know how I was able to convince the Devil Elders to spare Shirin, right? Kuroka nodded as Issei showed a portion of his power to the Bale family, including a certain Venelana Grimory, along with her brother, causing them to be terrified of Issei. While Venelana respected Issei. Lord Bale was the opposite, he feared and hated Issei. They knew the legendary exorcist known as the Honored One, someone that could even take down Ceres if he wanted to. He only chose to not do it, since he cared for Gabriel, he couldn't see her cry, that is why they are still alive. Even Serzichas and Grafia held immense respect for him, since he does not harm innocent devils, and was not blinded by church ideals. But they are close to dead if they try anything with him and his friends, even knowing that those that tried. Well, they haven't lived long enough to tell the tale. I see. But when will I meet her? I am dying to see her, it's been months since I have last seen her. Issei nodded her as he rubbed her back to calm her down, as he spoke, soon Kuroka, I assure you, even she wants to see you, and you know I always find one way to keep my word. The reason I am not letting you meet is because of Sona and her peerage, they don't know about you, and I am not risking your life, Kuroka. Kuroka looked at Issei and nodded, as she spoke with a smile, fine. Issei soon splits up as she speaks, but you better keep your word, Ice. I will, and make sure to keep your ears and tail in check when outside or greeting any humans, K. Yeah, yeah, you can count on it. Issei nodded as he walked outside with him heading to school. Kuroka only watched with a smile, he always found a way to keep his word, no matter the cost. Scene change. Guo Academy, 12.30pm. Issei was seated in the class, as he looked across the scene with a bored expression as he gave a sigh, math is so boring, they don't even teach the things important like taxes, instead it is fucking algebra and integration. I agree, Ice. I want to go back to killing strays, including that rat king, which was slain a few days ago Issei nodded as he spoke, I get it. You miss Pikachu, don't you? I am pretty sure it would have evolved into Raichu, if it had survived. Siegfried was left stunned at his words, Issei always had a soft spot for Pokemon since a very long time. He also was a fan of Digimon as well, due to his love for Pokemon. Whatever sees you fit, Issei. Jean soon joined in and spoke, yo. Issei, what the two of you talking about? Nothing much, Honored One wants to become a Pokemon champion now. Siegfried spoke in agreement as Issei spoke with a shrug as he responded, A. Hey, I just love those pocket monsters, I wish that one day I go to that world and become the very best like no one ever was. Or go to the digital world and have some fun with the Digimons, especially Metal Greymon. Jean gave a sigh as she spoke, you never change, do you ice? I could say the same, yaoi lover. 
Jean had a tick mark, as Siegfried looked annoyed, Issei loved teasing those that he cared about. Jean was about to respond in kind, Issei. You. Hey, hey, don't mind me, I am not here to judge, speaking of which, I wanted to talk something important Issei was about to continue, when the class suddenly started to squeal which garnered everyone's attention, as Issei commented. Seems like the great prince of Kuo is here. Issei spoke with a slightly mocking tone, as Yudo Kiba soon came inside the room and spoke to the girls, alright ladies, I am just here to bring someone. To the president. The girls kept squealing on his appearance, as Yudo walked to Issei and the others, as Siegfried asked, so what the great prince want with us, normies? I wanted to bring you three to Ria's, hope you are free right now. Issei nodded as he spoke, I was wanting to talk with Ria's anyways, so let's go. About what? You usually only go to her when it is related to Kaneko. Issei nodded in agreement, here she was given the nickname Kaneko, since this would attract unwanted attention and to protect her, hence she was given that nickname. Issei looked around seeing the girls all beaming at the interactions, Issei sighed, knowing that they must be thinking about it being between two princes. That is one reason, but the second one, I don't think that I should be not talking here. Yudo understood this as he spoke, then let's go. Issei and the rest of the group walked ahead, as the girls kept beaming on them. Issei only looked at them and gave a glance causing many of the girls to pass out and the boys to see them jealousy, seeing Issei act like this. Siegfried and Jean only sweat dropped at this, seeing how Issei acts in some situation. Once they reached the occult research club, Issei and his friends as Ria spoke, Ah Issei, Siegfried, Jean, I am glad you could come. Pineko looked at him with hope in her eyes, she wanted to talk about her sister, as Issei gave a nod, indicating he will talk to her as well. Issei then sat on the couch and placed his arms on the couch armrest as Siegfried and Jean also settled down as well. You did call, anyways, what is it you wanted to talk about? Ria's motion to Kaneko, as she walked forward, Issei then spoke, Ah Shirin, how are you doing? Shirin or Kaneko jumped on Issei and sat on his lap, which he did not mind, the Nekashu sisters were close to Issei, since he gave them a home and with Shirin, a second life. Shirin spoke with a more cheerful tone, I am fine, Naya. How is Kuroka Nisama? Issei spoke with a smile while rubbing her head, she is fine, I promised her that the two of you will be meeting soon. So when do you want to meet? Any time, but president says that we can only meet when student council president and her peerage don't notice us. Ria's nodded in agreement as she spoke, Shirin is correct, we have to be careful when the meeting does happen, that is why I asked Akeno to apply a noise barrier, so that this conversation doesn't reach outside ears, we can't tell Sony yet. Not until brother finds a way to prove her innocent. Akeno brought some snacks and tea for the guests as Issei responded. Yeah, I and Kuroka have been locating Kuroka's diary which had her experiences at the Nibiru's household all those years ago. Hopefully we can find it soon and clear her name. Issei spoke with a serious tone, as Ria's nodded. So far, the only ones that know about Kuroka's innocence were Issei, Siegfried, Jean, Ria's Gremory and her peerage, and finally the Gremory family, which included Serzich's as well, who was working to find evidence for Kuroka's evidence. While Gabriel only knows about Issei proving Kuroka's innocence, she does not know the true story yet. Ria's then spoke, anyways, is there anything else you wanted to know? Yep, just recently Siegfried was attacked. Many were surprised by this as Akeno asked, is it true? Yes, her name was Kalawerner, she attacked me cause of my power. I was easily able to fend her off, but she was not happy. She vowed to get vengeance, and the worst part is. She is a fallen angel. Siegfried spoke seriously as the Gremory peerage became concerned with this, they were horrified by what was going on, as Issei responded. The fallen angels have been making this place a turf, we have no clue about their goals and intentions. So we have to be careful. Ria's nodded, she remembered Sona mentioning about this, as she spoke. Why are you telling me this? How can you be sure that I am not a traitor? Ria spoke, as she wanted to see what Issei was thinking, he usually would handle situations like this without telling her or Sona, but this time, he intends to tell her, which did catch her off guard. She wondered what is going to happen. Nope, you are too weak to oppose your brother, and Issei spoke while shaking his hand, as Ria's in her anger, threw her cup of tea towards Issei, who was able to stop the cup in its tracks using infinity. The Sterics won't win, men you know. Issei spoke mockingly as Ria shouted angrily. I am your senior. Show some respect. Everyone sweat dropped seeing the antics of the two, as Akeno muttered to Yudo. Issei is the only one that can provoke Ria's to such an extent. Yudo responded in kind, yep, you got that one right, only he can get rid of her composure like that. Issei, will you stop provoking her like that? Siegfried mused as Issei retorted, come on Sieg, who will want to provoke the strong? Ria's gained a tick mark on her forehead, he was calling her weak even now, as Issei added, wow, look at that, you can actually see her brain working. 
Rhea soon sighed, it was off no use, Issei was the only one that can get on her nerves, and she can get on his. Taking a deep breath, she spoke, anyways, what do you plan on doing? I will deal with them personally, cause I have a feeling that one would come for me. Issei soon gave a smile as he took a bite of the cookie, like moths to a flame. Just tell Sona and her peerage that you have got this covered, the fallen won't be posing a problem. Rias looked at him and spoke, fine, but you owe me one. Sure why not, that is what friends are for, right? Rias only smiled in response, she could rely on Issei, and he could rely on her when things are tough. Scene change. Issei was on the bridge, waiting for Siegfried and Jean who were in the shop nearby as someone called out to him. Um, are you Issei Goho? Issei turned his gaze to see an attractive young woman with violet eyes and a curvaceous, slender body. She had long, silky black hair that reached down to her hips, he gave a smile knowing full well she was one of the fallen angels. She wore her school uniform, which consisted of a dark red jacket with a letter P embroidered in gold, a white undershirt, a red bow, and a green skirt with a thin white strip around the lower end. He then pretended to play along as he spoke. Well if you are looking for him, here he is. Issei spoke as he put his hands in his pockets as he asked, what do you want? My name is Yuuma Mano, and I wanted to ask are you single? Issei thought for a moment, remembering his relationship with Gabriel as he spoke, for the time being no. Issei lied to the fallen angel who was in disguise, as she spoke with a blush on her face, W will you go out with me? Issei had to give props to the facade she was putting forward, any man would have fallen for her charms, no pun intended. But Issei was no ordinary man, he is aware of the fallen angel's well-known strategy of hunting and killing threats to their plans of getting a promotion by the higher-ups. However, little does he know that was not her intention. She does not want to kill him because of the promotion, it was a completely different reason. Sure, this Saturday sounds good. Yuuma beamed in response as she spoke, yes, that would be wonderful. Alright then. The girl walks away as Issei could predict that she was going to kill him. He could only grin, he was certainly going to show who he is, and who knows, if the date is worthwhile, he will consider sparing her, keyword being consider. However, he also noticed there seemed to be doubt and sadness in her expression. Additionally, he had no reason of killing someone as beautiful as her yet, but if she harmed his friends like this Kalawiner did, then all bets are off. He soon caught up with Jean and Siegfried and told them about the situation. You sure about this? Siegfried asked to which Issei responded, yeah, I will be fine. I sensed her power, she did a real poor job at hiding it, and she is not that strong. I can tell that she is only a single paired winged fallen angel. Jean then spoke with a concerned tone, be careful, don't hesitate to call us for help if things get south. I will Jean. I will. Issei spoke, as he pondered on how the date will go. Scene change. I'm skip brought to you by Chibi Issei sneaking into Nintendo building to find a copy of Pokemon Legends ZA. The next day. Guomol, 9.30 AM. Issei seemed to be waiting for Yuuma to show up, he was wearing what seemed to be wearing a black turtleneck full sleeve t-shirt, a white jacket and black jeans. He also wore his signature sunglasses. Yuuma soon showed up, and she was wearing a short black dress with a small, light purple jacket on top. Issei watched with a smile, however he grinned internally knowing full well what is going to happen in the climax of the so-called date. So shall we begin, my dear? Yuuma had a redder tint, she was having second thoughts on eliminating this threat to her plan. She did not want to kill him, but Kakabiel and her friends forced her to do so, otherwise they would torture her permanently, giving her a fate worse than death. Yes, she may be selfish, but that was the only way she thought she could survive in the supernatural world, lest she ends up in the same fate as all those that opposed Kakabiel. Now she was not sure to hurt someone like him. Why yes. Issei nodded as the two started to head out for their date. Issei could sense she didn't have malice, but desperation. He sighed, knowing that the mastermind was the one responsible for this was still out there, and he needed to be dealt with. I wonder whether you will chose to kill me, or be different. Like those that I had to kill during my exorcist times. Issei thought as they had their date, during this he couldn't help but notice her breasts and ass, noting it to be big enough for him. He liked it in every way. Not many know this, but Issei was perverted too, but he was much more mellow in nature, he kept it hidden, only having perverted thoughts on what is in front of him. He rarely spoke his thoughts though. During the climax of the date, Issei was near the fountain, as Yuuma spoke, Issei, that was quite a fun date. I couldn't agree anymore. Issei wouldn't deny it, but he enjoyed this date. Now, it was the moment, of truth. What is Yuuma going to do now? Yuuma's gaze goes down, Issei sensed she became sad as Issei asks, something wrong? I. I. Before Issei could react Yuuma approached his face and kissed him on the lips, Issei widened his eyes in surprise as he looked at Yuuma, wondering why she did that. No girl would kiss a man, especially on their first date. I am sorry. 
Yuuma spoke, as suddenly she went away, a small droplet fell to the ground as black feathers fell on the ground. Issei then spoke. So she left, huh? Issei kept his finger on his lips and spoke, she kissed me. Now that's a surprise. Issei headed back home, as there was nothing he could do. He wondered why she kissed him to begin with. Did she really fall in love with him? He doubted it, as he hoped that he could get his answers soon enough. He picked up a feather and took it with him home, he did not know what is going to happen in the future. For now, he could only await what comes next. Scene change. Issei's house, 9.30pm. Issei was at his home on the rooftop, he was taking a sip of a beer, as he sighed. He wondered what Yuuma was doing. He spoke with Drag. Yo. Drag, you awake. Drag looked at his partner and asked, yes, is something the matter? Why did that fallen angel kiss me? Drag responded with a sigh, is it not obvious? The fallen angel really liked you. My guess is that she was forced to kill you, and she fell for you during the date. I see. Well she won't be the first to try that, at least she chose different. Issei spoke with a sigh, as suddenly, someone came crashing down on the rooftop, this was none other than Yuuma Mano, except this time she seemed to have a more mature expression, and was taller. Her clothing was now consisting of black, strap-like objects, resembling leather, around and under her breasts, a thong-like piece held around her hips by three thin straps, gloves that ran right up her arms with small lengths of chains hanging from them, shoulder guard-like objects on her shoulders with three large spikes sprouting from her right shoulder, and black thigh-high-heeled boots. She also had two black wings as well. Issei was shocked as he exclaimed with surprise, Yuma. He please, H help M me. Yuma fell unconscious, Issei could see that there were several bruises and injuries on her body. She was bleeding from her head and other locations. It seemed like someone tortured her. Garoka, Siegfried and Jean also came in, as Siegfried asked. Issei, what happened? He soon looked at Yuma and spoke, is she? The fallen angel I went on a date with, but she never tried to kill me. Jean then responded with worry, what is even going on? We should take her inside, she needs Yuuma was unable to complete when they sensed three more presences, as they all looked up to see three four-winged fallen angels looking down upon them. Issei gritted his teeth as he spoke, Kuroka, take Yuuma inside. Kuroka looked at him for a moment, but seeing his serious expression she nodded. Kuroka lifted Yuuma up and headed inside, as he looked towards Jean and Siegfried who all stepped forward. Guys, it seems like we have to fight against them. Siegfried gave a smile and spoke. Just like the good old days. Issei gave a grin and responded, yep, just like the good old days. Jean also was ready for battle. The trio was ready to finally have a confrontation with a proper supernatural being. Issei's rooftop, 10.30pm. Issei, Jean and Siegfried looked at their opponents, which included fallen angels which were named Hegenti, Malich and Kameo. Their leader Hegenti, who was described to be a white-haired female spoke. You three surrender Rainer to us, right now. Unless you three want to die. The woman spoke arrogantly as Issei scoffed, the trio looked at each other. It was just like a regular Monday when they used to kill supernatural beings, as Mollich spoke, who was described to be a blonde male, spoke. You are just an ordinary human blessed with a sacred gear, you are not that powerful. Give the woman back, or you three will die. Mollich spoke, as Issei spoke with a mocking tone, sorry no can do, she has taken my interest, I would be saying this, leave before things will get tough. And you lass, you should also go back and head back to Grigori, else things will get nasty. Hagneti only smiled as she spoke, so you won't surrender. Shame, I kind of liked your appearance. Well, you are not the first time to say that. Issei looked at her for a moment and spoke, Hagneti, right. The three fallen angels were surprised as he looked to the others and responded, and I presume Malich and Kameo, right. Though don't be surprised, I am familiar with the supernatural world. Either way, shame that your beauty doesn't hide your rotten heart. Hagneti gritted her teeth in anger, as Issei continues, and your dogs, they won't even be a bother to me. You are far too weak. The last two fallen angels gritted their teeth in fury, his arrogance was really annoying, as Kameo, who was a black-haired individual spoke, I will destroy the boy personally. Kameo was about to charge only for Hagneti, to stop him and speak, no Kameo, this arrogant human is mine. Issei only gave a grin and spoke, then let's dance, my dear beauty. Issei turned to Jean and Siegfried who nodded, the trio got ready for their fight against the fallen angels, all three of them having smirks on their faces. It was time to stretch these muscles after all. Issei immediately looked at Hagnadi as she threw multiple light spears, as Issei only danced around dodging the spears without a problem. All the while he was yawning, as Hagnadi shouted, stop dodging. Then stop hitting me. Issei responded with a mocking tone, making the fallen angel even more angrier, as Issei soon reached her behind sitting on her ass which forced her to bend, she had a red tint when this happened. However she was angry due to the humiliation that Issei put her through. 
You don't mind me showing off, do you? Issei soon grabbed her by the head and pulled her close, as he soon generated a blue attraction sphere and sent it towards a different direction. Issei threw Hagnati towards the sphere, causing her to scream in pain. Hagnati was barely a threat for someone like Issei. He looked at her as she desperately tried to escape. Issei soon walked towards her and spoke, so where is all that bravado? Hagnati had a look of anger, but there was a look of fear as well, Issei then spoke, seems like you are too weak. You? Hagnati growled as Issei only charged red attraction in his arms and killed her instantly, she was barely a problem. Hagnati exploded into a flurry of feathers. Issei had a yawn, wondering how the others are doing in their fights. Siegfried was facing off against Malich as he tried to use his spears to harm him, but Siegfried was not letting that happen. He was using two demonic swords to face off against a fallen angel, that being Baoming, which was described to be a long sword with a darkish purple color, which reach up to half the blade nearing towards the upper portion where it is silver, it has a unique crossguard. The light purple part placed onto the crossguard extending up the purple colored fuller with a small yellow circle in the middle, making it seem almost like an eye, a yellow two-handed grip, and a purple pommel that has light purple ornaments around it. It can create powerful whirlwinds. And nothing which was a much lighter color and ornate appearance which is different from other demonic swords, it appears almost like a broadsword with a much wider blade, a blue crossguard that extends up the dark blue colored filler with a light blue diamond in the middle, with a hardening line that appears to be wave-like on both sides, a golden grip and unique shaped pommel. Siegfried was able to deflect the attacks with quite ease, using Baoming he created a very strong whirlwind which caused Malich to be sent flying. Siegfried had a smile this whole time as he spoke. I have faced tougher and stronger, you are far from being tougher. Siegfried dashed towards Malich who responded by throwing several spears at him, but he used nothing that blocked it with ease and destroyed it. Malich started to run, but Siegfried was not having any of it. He started to rush towards him as he was running with fear. No, please spare me. Siegfried only looked with a tone of disappointment as he spoke, you think us humans are weak because we don't have wings like you, or magic like you. Allow me to demonstrate you what us humans are capable of. Siegfried unleashed a huge whirlwind using Baoming sending Malich flying as he cried for mercy, he was completely fearful, knowing what Siegfried was going to do. He soon used nothing to stab Malich in the heart, precisely aiming when he was in the right position, as Malich flailed helplessly as he soon exploded into a bunch of feathers. The whirlwind subsided as Siegfried spoke with a sigh, well, this seems like it. I wonder what Jean is doing. Speaking of Jean, she was using a simple holy sword to fight off against Cameo, who was unable to land a single hit on the carrier of Joan of Arc's beard. Mon fallen angel Kun, I know you are better than that, unless you are all too incapable of doing much. Jean spoke with a mocking tone, as Cameo was getting angry. You damned woman, you really think I a Jean slashed off Cameo's face as he screamed in pain, Jean then spoke with a smile, I would advise you to take me seriously, fallen angel Kun. Jean soon followed it up with stab to his chest as he coughed up blood, she soon dropped her sword and spoke, is that it, fallen angel Kun? See curse you? Jean only smiled and spoke, my life was cursed to begin with, you are too late for that. Jean soon followed it up with a decapitating cameo's head, as he soon burst into a flurry of feathers. She soon twirled her blade, as she soon joined Siegfried and Issei, as she spoke. See Kun, Ice Chan, are you done with your fights? Issei and Siegfried nodded in understanding, as Issei spoke. They were too weak, none of us needed to use our sacred gears. Siegfried nodded in agreement as he spoke, you got that one, I managed to bully him to submission. P. You are right on that one. Jean nodded as she spoke, well, let's head inside and ask Yuma Chan about why she was like that. Issei nodded in response, however he felt a huge magic presence, as he spoke, you two go on ahead, I have some business to attend. Siegfried and Jean looked at him, Siegfried had a smile, while Jean had a pout, as Siegfried spoke in response, alright Issei, have fun with your long-time girlfriend. Seed Kun, let go of me, this is not fair. Jean protested in annoyance, as Issei sighed at Siegfried's words. The two then left, as Issei turned around to see none other than Gabriel. She now wore angle-length cassocks with gold trimmings, she also had an halo which was previously hidden during their last encounter. This time, she had a smile on her face. She rushed towards Issei and gave him a tight embrace. Issei Gabriel spoke while happily embracing Issei, she finally got her chance of meeting Issei after four years. Issei returned the embrace as well, as Gabriel spoke while a tear fell from her eye, I missed you, Ice. I missed you too, Gaby Chan. The embrace continued on for a short while, Gabriel did not want even to let it go. After a few moments, they let each other go. Issei then spoke, so how have you been doing? It was hard without you. Gabriel spoke while looking away as she spoke while shaking her head, but I have been back, hope you haven't forgotten about me. I won't ever forget you. 
Gabriel gave a smile as she soon sensed the presence of someone else as well, as she asked. Ice. Have you been seeing other women? Gabriel's voice was more curious, but there was a tinge of jealousy in it. Issei spoke while rubbing his head and spoke, yeah, I did have a date with a fallen this morning and. Issei looked at Gabriel as she pouted in response as two tears were on her eyes, A. Hey. Issei responded with a tone of surprise. You replaced me, didn't you? Issei shook his head and spoke, no. 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 Not at all. It was more or less a charade, if anything I only did the date, so that I wanted to see what kind of a person she is. Truth be told, I can never think about replacing you Gabriel. Let alone actually doing it. Gabriel looked at him for a moment and sniffled as he spoke, and besides. Issei pulls her towards him, making her blush as he speaks. You will always be my first love, no matter what it is. Gabriel had a red tint as Issei hugged her in response, he knew how much Gabriel meant to him, as he spoke while splitting up after a moment. Although, she did kiss me on the cheek, so I am sorry for that. Gabriel looked at him and did not know how to respond, she feared Issei replacing her, she wanted to respond, but Issei continued, but I can assure you that, my relationship with her was pure platonic, and honestly I was half expecting me to attack me at the climax of this date, and try to kill me and. Gabriel cuts him off by placing a finger on his lips and speaks, I know you are not the type to like anyone else, and from what I can tell, you weren't romantically interested in her, weren't you? Issei shook his head and spoke. I won't deny, she has got a nice chest and firm ass. But that doesn't compare with Gabriel cuts him off by playfully smacking him on his forehead and speaking, pervert. Anyways, that was not the only reason I have come here. Gabriel's expression changed to a more saddened one as she looked at Issei in his eyes, Issei had an idea on what this meant as he asked. Let me guess Michael. Gabriel looked at him and nodded, yes Ice, he has become a problem and has been hunting you down. I don't understand, you have been remaining in hiding, so why does he want to hunt you down? Worse, he has become desperate. And soon, he will know you are here. Did something happen between you and him? Gabriel asked to which Issei responded, truth be told, I honestly don't know, he always seemed disdainful of my very existence, and you know me, if I don't like anyone, I am vocal about it, right? That is true. Gabriel responded, remembering on how Issei's ideals used to often clash with some of the church exorcists and Michael himself. Not to mention, my memory is fuzzy, I don't remember if I had a family or any relatives before I was at the church, my first memory was meeting you, remember? Gabriel nodded in agreement, he was only a few years old, around 5 or 6 when he met her. She helped him a lot, and eventually they shared a very close bond, even having a relationship a year before Issei escaped from the church. Before that, I don't remember anything, my mind is so fuzzy, and when I try to remember something prevents me from doing so. Issei added as Drag mused. Indeed, I was able to send something in Issei's head, I have been investigating what it is and haven't found anything, once we get rid of it, hopefully we can help him regain his memory. Gabriel nodded in understanding, as she continued, if there is anything I can help with Drake. If needed, I will contact you. Gabriel nodded in understanding as she asked, not to mention, you have the Excalibur right? Yep, fully fused and ready to use. Issei revealed the Excalibur to Gabriel making her wide-eyed, he was able to reforge the sword successfully into one being. Excalibur was described to be a white glowing sword with a special inscription written on it. It had a golden rain guard and a blue hilt which Issei had brought out. Gabriel took the sword and had a bright smile as she spoke, you did it, for centuries we have been trying to refuse the sword and. You did it. You got that one right. Gabriel returned the sword as he asked, you sure? Won't Mickey hate it? He would, but it matters not, anyways. Aside from that, I also have good news. Gabriel spoke with a small blush as Issei asked, what is the matter? When I found out about your location, I was able to convince Michael to let me stay in Kuo, and. I am in your care, Ice. Gabriel spoke as she pulled herself closer to Issei, with him having a red tint, as he spoke, oh dear, I wonder how Kuroka is going to react to this, and our new Frolin guest that was attacked recently. Wait, Kuroka, the Nekashu. She is living here. Gabriel spoke with a surprised tone, as Issei added, yep, you got that one right, and I believe you need to hear this. Issei then recounted everything what Kuroka had told him, which included the experimentation on her. She had killed her master to protect her sister Shirin from her master, who attempted to conduct unethical tests on her in his research on creating a super devil. Gabriel was horrified at this, soon her horror changed to anger knowing what Kuroka had gone through. Issei calmed her down, he was equally angry, but he was concerned that she will end up falling due to the sin of wrath, as he spoke. Calm down, Gabi-chan. Serzichas has been working to prove her innocence, and we have also been locating her diary to get enough evidence to deal with this problem. I have a feeling that if we don't get access to the evidence, someone can use it against us. 
Gabriel became serious, she knew that the situation was dire. She then spoke. I see. And are you sure of this? Issei nodded and spoke, although a possibility, if we can get hands on the research, we must prevent it from falling into the wrong hands. Not only that, Siegfried was attacked by the fallen angels here, and before you ask, it was a different one than the one we are tending to. Very well, Issei. This is a problem, and for now, I think you should handle this, I will help you in any way I can, which includes bringing Kuroka's innocence. But what about the other sister? Gabriel asked as Issei responded. She is with Rhea's Gremory and her peerage, she is a rook right now. She is living a normal and happy life, as a devil servant. Gabriel nodded as Issei continued. Rhea's is someone I trust, she may be a bit spoiled, but she is kind-hearted and friendly, although she is easy to provoke, and I have fun teasing her. Issei spoke with a shrug as Gabriel gave a sigh, this aspect of Issei was also not gone. His playful and cheerful demeanor was not gone at all. This was a side of him that she loved the most. Speaking of which, I wanted to ask. Gabriel looked at Issei as he asked, yes. I want to make our relationship official. I want to be your girlfriend for real. Gabriel spoke with a blush, she had heard about relationships recently including the love between a boyfriend and a girlfriend, and she wanted to experience that as well. Sure, if that is what you want then. Issei pulled her closer and gave a kiss on the forehead, I don't mind. Gabriel had an even redder tint, as small tears fell from her eyes. She always wanted to be his girlfriend and take it one step further one day, when she won't fall due to having the sin of lust. But for now, this would do, as she spoke with a tone of gratitude. Thank you Ice. Issei only gave a smile, as some moments pass. Gabriel rests her head on Issei's chest, she was happy that they are together and will be together. Yo. Aren't you going to greet us too Lady Gabriel? The two looked around to see Siegfried leaning on the ceiling with a grin, as Jean was standing with an annoyed expression. She was jealous on seeing Gabriel here. I will, it's been a while, Siegfried and Jean. The two nodded, Jean lost her annoyed expression. She may be jealous, but she was happy to see Gabriel once again. She then spoke. Yeah, it's nice to meet you too. Lady Gabriel. Jean spoke as Gabriel shook her head and spoke, please, call me Gabriel. Well we are in this house. Wait, what do you mean? Siegfried asked to which Issei spoke, Gabriel managed to convince Michael to stay here, and from now, she will be staying in Kuo. Issei, is this true? Siegfried became concerned, as Jean was also worried. Sure they were happy that Gabriel was here, but this was going to cause some complications. Sensing this Gabriel responded, you need not worry about the devils knowing about me, Siegfried, Jean. I can hide my energy pretty well, encasing myself as a normal human. I will even take up a nickname that would hide my presence as an angel. Unless a say or any of you want to tell about me, I would keep myself hidden, sounds good. Alright, then. I don't mind. Speaking of which, our guest has woken up. Issei and Gabriel became surprised as Issei asked, let's go. Scene change. Hiroka was tending to Raynor's wounds, the fallen angel was surprised by a stray devil being in the same house, the reason she came to Issei was because he was on the roof. Adding further concern, two exorcists lived in the same residence. Her concern soon became confusion. How can enemies stay under one roof? Little does she know, there is also a bigger surprise awaiting her. Soon after a while, Issei came inside, along with Siegfried, Gabriel and Jean. Raynor looked at them and became even more shocked. She wondered who this new person was, she seemed recognizable, but was unable to pin on who exactly she was, as Issei spoke. Before we begin, I think you know Siegfried, Jean, me and Karoka, right? Raynor nodded as Issei spoke. Then meet Seraph Gabriel, one of the four great Seraphs. Raynor became pale at this, as he could see the fear in her eyes. She feared that they are going to torment or torture her, as Gabriel spoke. Raynor right. Don't worry, we have no such intentions of torturing you. If it is alright, can you tell us who did this to you? Raynor still was fearful, she knew that Issei was with the angels, which did not make any sense, since there was a stray devil with them too. Raynor. We are not here to harm you in any way, if we wanted to, we wouldn't be saving you from them, and if you are wondering, those three fallen angels are long dead. You are safe here. Issei spoke with a tone of assurance, as Raynor gulped, her helpers were strong, but she was not sure on whether to trust them or not. The say and Gabriel approached her, as Gabriel used a healing spell onto Rainer, she healed up immediately much to her surprise, Gabriel then spoke with a smile. There you go, you should be able to move now. Gabriel then added to a surprise Karoka, angels have the highest grade when it comes to supernatural medical healing equipment and spells, aside from Phoenix Tears, we can also heal wounds instantaneously, no matter how damaging it can be. The only exception is when a person dies, that is it. I see. 
Kuroka spoke with a tone of surprise, as Gabriel spoke, and worry not Kuroka, Issei informed me about your situation, and I know what has happened. We should get to the bottom of your issue. Kuroka looked at her for a moment, as she spoke, thank you Lady Gabriel. Gabriel only had a smile on her face, as Issei asked, so Rainer, that is your name, which was what Siegfried had told me about, right? Rainer looked at him and nodded as she spoke with an apologetic tone, I am sorry, I had to hide my real name and identity from you. Worry not, you can repay your apology by telling us who did this to you. Who were those three fallen angels working for? And, why are they even here to begin with? Rainer looked at him and spoke. I will tell everything. Rainer took a deep breath and drank a glass of water, Gabriel and the others took a seat as Rainer recounted everything. For your first and second question, it was Kakabiel and his fallen angels that did this to me, my own friends wanted me dead, that was why I was in this situation. They tortured me for failing to kill you in the date, they did not understand why, but they wanted you dead, cause you are a sacred gear wielder. Issei and Siegfried look at each other, as glances were shared across with each other. Gabriel narrowed her gaze, her former brother hasn't changed at all, he is still a warmonger. Her thoughts were snapped with Siegfried speaking. Okay that checks out. Rainer nodded as Issei continued, so I believe this Kalwerner is one of those friends. How did you know? Issei pointed to Siegfried and responded, he was attacked by her, but she was forced to retreat. She never told this due to Kakabiel. Rainer understood this, she must have lied that she is still watching the possessor and is trying to kill him. But when in actuality, she failed to do so, Rainer clenched the sheets in anger, she was starting to hate her so-called friends before, but now, she refused to see them as such, and could care less if they died. Yep, girl feared getting her ass kicked like you did and chose otherwise, she wouldn't even be here. She saved her own skin, I guess. Issei mused as everyone agreed to his words, as Gabriel asked. So why is Kakabiel here to begin with? Rainer spoke after taking a deep breath, he is here to kill the heiresses, his intention is to restart the Great War once again, he wants to kill them. This would cause Lord Lucifer and Lady Leviathan to take revenge, and this would cause the Great War to begin. He hasn't found anything relating to the angels yet, but he is planning to find out soon. The Excaliburs have been stolen and he was not happy with the news. Issei could only internally grin at this, he could see Siegfried, Kuroka and Jean smiling with this as Gabriel decided to speak up. Well, that should be more than enough, speaking of which, did Issei seem familiar to you? Raynor looked towards Issei and spoke, no, why? Do you remember the story of the Honored One? Rainer nodded, he was feared and respected by the supernatural factions, that was before his excommunication, after which many primarily the angels hated instead of respecting him. He was still feared knowing that the man is still out there. What if I were to tell you that the honored one is right in front of your eyes? Gabriel spoke with a smile, as Rainer was left surprised and stunned. She knew Gabriel won't lie due to her falling, meaning what she said was the truth, as Issei stepped forward making Rainer realize, she made the right choice by not attacking him. Truth be told, I knew the date you had set up was a false one, you wanted me to die at the end, right? Rainer flinched upon this, as she nodded and spoke truthfully. At first, I was told to do just that, but I never wanted to kill you in any way, that is why I ran away. Issei responded, after kissing me without my permission on the lips. The tick mark grew on Gabriel's head, while Kuroka and Jean had a look of annoyance, Siegfried had an amused grin. Rainer spoke with a red tint. Why yeah, I am sorry for what I did. Issei only gave a sigh and spoke, just don't do it again. Speaking of which, I also forgot to mention, Gabriel is my girlfriend. Rainer became even more shocked as a tear fell from her eye, she then asked, that means you lied to me. Nope, when we met back at the date, we weren't a thing and now we are. Just recently I accepted her as a boyfriend, before we came here. Rainer looked at him and nodded, she wiped her tears as Issei spoke, you should get some rest, we can continue this discussion tomorrow. Okay. That means I can stay here. Rainer asked to which Issei responded, sure, since you will probably be hunted down, I think it would be wise if you stay here. Oh okay. Rainer looked down, she was grateful to Issei for not only saving her, but also for giving her a home. The honored one, was someone she was not going to meet ever in her life. But today, she ended up meeting him, as she looked at Issei, they all started to leave her in her room, Rainer then asked. What happened to the three fallen angels, that were after me? Issei only gave a glance, his light blue eyes piercing hers as he spoke coldly, dead. That word alone brought chills to Rainer's spine. The coldness of Issei's voice was drilled into her mind knowing on how he must have defeated the fallen angels. She shuddered knowing what the honored one was capable of and what damage he can do if he so chose to do so. She was glad that she chose not to kill him, otherwise only feathers is what would remain of her. Scene change. Time skip brought to you by Chibi Issei entering the Pokemon game, he stole into his Nintendo Switch and starts playing it. The next day. Issei's house, 9.30 am. 
Issei yawned, as he rubbed his eyes, he soon felt someone sleeping next to him. He turned to see Gabriel who was sleeping right next to him. He soon smiled and pulled the seraph close to himself. She rubbed her body towards him, as he seemed worried. He was worried that she may have lustful thoughts, however to his surprise, she did not seem like falling, since her wings were still white. He sighed a relief upon this. After all, he did not want her to lose her life and abandon it because of him. Gabriel's eyes soon opened as she gave a smile to Issei, as she spoke, morning, ice. Morning, Gabi Chan. Gabriel smiled as she wrapped her arms around him as she nuzzled into Issei's chest. Seems like my angel needs some more attention. Gabriel stopped and could only give a playful chuckle. They had been separated for four years, and now they are finally together, Issei kissed her on the forehead which made her blush. Additionally Issei was the first that made her fall in love. Usually, angels can't fall in love, due to them resulting in falling due to the sin of lust. Azazel being a well-known example of such. But love, that is no sin, it was never a sin, instead it was always a good thing to love. Gabriel never fell in love with anyone, but Issei, he was different, she fell for him, and was devastated and lonely when Issei had left her. Eventually, she found out about Issei's location and asked Michael to live in Kuo, which he agreed, seeing no reason to not let her stay here. She was excited to once again meet Issei. Gabriel also made sure to not lie to him in any way, as this would cause her to fall, and no one would want that. Even Issei did not want her to lose being an angel, and turn to a fallen angel. Issei. Gabriel's voice seemed to drift into a bit of sadness, as she knew that she will never be able to satisfy Issei in any way, as Issei asked with concern. What's wrong? Gabriel looked at Issei and spoke, I am sorry for one thing, Issei. For what? Gabriel spoke with a sigh, as your girlfriend, I won't be like traditional girlfriends, I can't satisfy you when we are in. You know, so I am sorry for that. Gabriel spoke with a blush, as Issei noted her wings starting to be a bit grey as Issei realized she was experiencing both guilt and lust, as Issei spoke while pulling her closer and rubbing her back. Hey, don't beat yourself. Even if you can't satisfy me in any way. I will still love you. Gabriel looked at him, with small tears in her eyes, as Issei continued. And besides, we will find a way where we can have a proper relationship, and if you fall, I will hate myself for letting that happen. Your whole life depends on being an angel, and I don't want to be the one responsible for your fall, I don't want to ruin your life. Issei spoke while wiping her tears. Gabriel looked at Issei for a moment and nodded, she shook her head riding her head of those thoughts, as Issei noticed her wings return to being white. She then spoke with a small smile. See Gaby Chan, I like it when you smile. Gabriel's smile widened upon Issei's words as she spoke, if that is what you want, then I won't fall, I will do my best to being your girlfriend, while not falling. That's the spirit. Gabriel smiled as she spoke. I think we should get up, the others would be waiting for us. Yep. The two got up and were starting to get dressed, as Gabriel spoke, speaking of which, I have a surprise for you, my Issei, wait for it when we get to school, okay? Alright, if you say so. Issei responded, as the two soon headed down to have some lunch. Scene change. Who Academy, 9.30 AM. Issei was seated in the academy, as he pondered on what surprise he was going to get, however just as he was going to speak, someone entered the room, as Issei, Siegfried and Jean became wide-eyed on who it was. No way. Issei spoke with a tone of surprise, as Jean added, it can't be. Never thought I would be seeing this. Siegfried spoke with a tone of surprise, as the one who arrived in the class was none other than Gabriel. She now wore a white formal shirt, a light brown formal blazer. She wore brown formal pants and shoes. Her hair was flowing and she wore a graceful appearance. She looked towards Issei and gave a smile. She soon turns to her class and speaks, My name is Gabriel D'Angelo, I will be your new homeroom teacher. Your old homeroom teacher decided to quit, so I will be the one in charge. Some of the boys immediately looked at her with lustful stares, which Gabriel promptly ignored, as Issei gave a glare to the boys, Gabriel saw his jealous look as she gave a smile, as she spoke. Oh and speaking of which boys, I am already taken, so don't bother trying to ask me out on a date or anything, alright. Gabriel spoke with a smile, as the boys started to sulk and pout in disappointment, as a girl named Kaori Murayama asked. Who is that person? Is he in this school? Gabriel gave a nod, as she spoke, yes Miss Murayama, he is in this school. Issei was mentally pleading to not revealing her girlfriend, as Gabriel spoke anyway. Actually, he is right there, yes, my boyfriend is none other than Issei Goho. Issei looked down, as Siegfried only chuckled at his friend's misery, as Issei mentally cursed the situation, knowing the shitstorm that was going to happen now. Damn it, Gabriel. Issei thought as the boys started to bombard him with questions, while the girls were all irritated that Issei was chosen by such a beauty. 
Jean also was jealous at this, as Issei tried his best to deal with the situation, he couldn't even run, due to how crowded the situation is. Ara, seems like my love is really popular. Gabriel spoke with a smile, she for some reason enjoyed the situation. She waited for a while, as she clapped to get everyone's attention. Now, now, we are getting past time, I would suggest you to get back to your seats, everyone. The crowd reluctantly sat down, as Gabriel started her lesson, Issei sighed in relief as he wondered what she is going to teach. It turned out to be English, as she spoke. I will be teaching you English, you children will be needing it later when you travel to the world for higher studies or your job, I want everyone to pay attention for my class, no talking, is that understood? Gabriel spoke, as there was silence, the Seraph had eons of experience handling people and students, and a class of teenagers was not a big deal for her. Scene change. A few hours later. The cult research club room, 1.30 pm. Say, why is Lady Gabriel here? Rias exclaimed with concern, she did not mind her at all knowing how much of a close bond these two have, but she was worried that Sona will question her even more. Gabriel was present alongside Issei, Siegfried and Jean, as Issei spoke. Truth be told, I was myself not aware that Gabriel was going to be a part of the faculty, and I was expecting her to stay at home, but regardless I am happy. Rias could only sigh at this, as she spoke. Issei, I am not against her being here, knowing how much of a bond you two shared. But I am worried that some others would come to know. You know who I am talking about, right? Ria's words did make sense, as Gabriel spoke with a tone of assurance, adding, you needn't worry Ria's gremory, I have got it under control. I was able to get in without her and her devils even sensing that I was a seraph. Are you sure? Sona is pretty smart, Lady Gabriel. Gabriel shook her head and spoke, I have got experience my dear, I may be naive, but I am not inexperienced, I know what I am doing. You can be assured that you won't fall into trouble. Ria's and her peerage only looked for a moment, as Ria spoke, fine, but be careful alright, Issei values you a lot, and I don't want to see him sad. You can count on it. Gabriel mused as Kaneko felt a bit jealous seeing this, Gabriel then continued, I wanted to ask, you two seem close, are you two, you know? The two understood what she was talking about, as both made a face of pure disgust, shocking Gabriel. The others knew that they would rather die than date each other, as Siegfried spoke. These morons won't ever see themselves as lovers, you can be assured on that one. Siegfried spoke with a hushed tone, as Gabriel could only nod, both soon spoke with utter disgust. Him her. Ria's essay spoke in unison as they continued, that is never going to happen, Lady Gabriel Gaby Chan. I understand. Gabriel mused, as some chuckled seeing their state, as Issei spoke. Anyways, Ria's will you keep this a secret for me? Ria's looked at him for a moment, and spoke, fine, I don't mind, since she is very close to you, ice. Thanks Ria's. Ria's only smiled, as Issei spoke, speaking of which, I eliminated three fallen angels last night. Ria's and her peerage lost their expressions and became worried, as she asked, what happened? Are you okay? Yeah, I am fine, it matters not, I was able to take them down. Turns out I know everything what had happened thanks to one of the fallen angels not killing me, she told me everything. Ria's nodded as Issei intently revealed everything to Ria's. Needless to say, she was shocked and horrified, Akeno was angered by Kakabiel's actions, and so were Kiba and Kaneko, they all knew that they were going to harm and attack Ria's. They had to inform this to Serzich's, as Ria's spoke. I see, I will let my brother know about this, this is something that cannot be hidden, what Kakabiel is doing is an act of war. Issei nodded in agreement, as he spoke, yeah, let him know about it, okay. Ria's nodded as she spoke, either way, it is nice to finally meet Issei's girlfriend, he missed you a lot actually. Issei could be seen having a tick mark, as Ria smirked, she then added, that is not all, he told me a lot about you, and how was your time with us. Issei grunted in frustration, if there was anyone that could push Issei, it was Ria's. There was a reason they were best friends, it was because they could push each other's buttons and get away with it. However, they had each other's back when the situation was tough. Oh worry not, Ria's. Gabriel spoke while pulling Issei towards him and responded, I will take good care of him. Issei could only have an embarrassed look on her face, as some chuckled at Issei's situation. All in all, everyone was having a good time. Scene change. Unknown location, Kuo Academy, 1.30 pm. The woman was watching Kuo Academy, she was described to be a beautiful blue-haired woman. She had long flowing hair, she wore a black blazer, a white shirt, a black pants, and heels. She had a solemn yet serious look on her face. I sensed you here, where are you? The woman spoke, as she sensed someone. She looked in the direction of Kuo Academy as she smiled. I finally found you, my love. The woman spoke as she soon took to the skies and headed back, she was going to meet him when no one else was looking for him. That's it guys. Thanks for watching and supporting us. See you in the next part.